the session. Go ahead. Go ahead, Agamat. Okay. So uh, we have a create account API. Uh, basically, our intention is to uh, use this API for registration via mobile number as well as we want to register with, uh, with a username password. So it's going to be a buy uh, by feature kind of a current uh, by feature kind of API. Currently, we implemented only for the mobile registration and the username and password, which is a traditional uh, way of uh, logging in, that's yet to be implemented. But the backend schema is already designed that it can support both. Uh, that that that's the reason we have a field called account type. So we can, depending on the type of account that we are registering, are registering the backend validation will get kicked in and the respective data will be validated and stored. So for, okay, for registering a mobile number, so this is a uh, minimum data that we need to pass in. And once I'm going to register, regardless whether the mobile number already exists or not, if, if it doesn't exist, it will just create an entry in the backend and send a verification code to the respective mobile number. If it already exists, it will just uh, create a new verification code and trigger SMS to the uh, respective mobile number. So I already have my mobile number in the back end. I'm just registering again. Seems like there is a SMS API failure. Um, I don't know what it may be, but it may be that Twilio only has access to US numbers. Okay. No, now works, it's so. now it's working. <laughs> I think sometimes the connectivity issues. Now it's able to. I respond back at 204 and I got the SMS code in my mobile number. So, okay, now once you get the SMS, you're going to use, we uh, have to use a verify uh, code API. So here we need to provide the, the number that we re uh, received in the mobile. 2557. And, and we need to specify what is the mobile number against which we are going to verify. So the moment we are going to verify this, it's going to send us a, a JWT token. Currently, this token is set to a lifespan of one year uh, for our initial beta version. Uh, uh, later on, uh, this would be reduced to a time limit, maybe a month or a week, depending on, on the design that we are going to implement. So it, it also gives you how long before the expiry kicks in. So this is roughly, uh, I think it's a millisecond or a second for an entire year. So, okay, we, we have to use this token for subsequent call in the other APIs, uh, either a school lane or anything that we are going to come up with. Okay, uh, once we have a token and we want to know what is the uh, user management data corresponding to the token, we can use an API called get token information by passing in the token in the header field. So the data has to be passed under a key of a key called authorization. And the value is a bearer token that you retrieve, uh, that you receive as part of your code verification. So now if I'm going to retrieve this, it's going to give me the user account that is associated with the bearer token that we passed in. So here you can see what is a phone number, what is a, is account active or not. The moment you verify your code, the account will be activated. Till you you activate your account for the first time, it, it will be in an inactive state and you won't be able to use it. So it's kind of a additional security. Uh, if you can see, there is a device array of device field, right? So the reason why we are using this is 
when we want to uh, trace or track how many mobile number have installed a specific application using the same same number so it's like uh, anybody can, currently we are implementing this for the school in app so a father and a mother from a same family can install the same app using the same number so if, if this is just to track using currently okay so these are the three apis and there is one more api called recent verified verification token in case your verification token is expired or you you forgot or it's not delivered we can actually invoke a verify a recent api and the payload is just need to key in your mobile number Let's see i want to say Okay, I think the patch is not working, so I need to pass a, a HTTP method over it. Okay, uh, so uh, this is the reason. Once you uh, once you fire this API again, you receive a, uh, receive a SMS token that you can use to verify the code, which will again give you the access token. So these are the high level APIs that is implemented. There was one pretty good question raised by Taylor today morning. Uh, why we have a create account but we don't have a login api for uh to log in using a mobile number and uh, usually for login api comes into place once we are using a username password kind of context for mobile number registration there is nothing called login you just fire the you you just send the payload and you uh, receive a sms regardless whether it's the first time you're creating an account or you're just calling it again and again so the context of login doesn't come for a mobile registration, but it will only come for a, a login using username and password. Uh, I have already defined the specification for login under the, so under the swager, you can see there is already a login and logout defined. This, these APIs will come into uh, play once we are implementing a username, password, login kind of context for future uh, features. Till then, it won't be used for mobile registration. So that's it uh, with respect to the UIN.